First tonight, a Facebook post is calling out locker room policies at area YMCA's. Some people are even terminating their memberships after they say the gym allows guests to change in the locker room that aligns with their gender identity. Mamie Ba joins us live from the Xenia YMCA tonight. She spoke ex exclusively with the Y and also with the man who made that Facebook post. Mamie, what is he saying tonight? On November 10th, Van Holloway took to Facebook. He said his wife had an encounter at this YMCA in Xenia. This Facebook post has more than 180 comments and at least a dozen shares. He says they became aware that the YMCA allowed people to choose the locker room that aligns with their gender identity when his wife had an encounter in the locker room. The couple has since put their membership on pause and and have other, and, and according to the Facebook post, others have been doing the same when it comes to this area YMCA. So, Mamie, what does the Y have to say about all this then? Well, I did reach out to the YMCA to ask about the Facebook post and to ask if it did not notify its members in a statement that you should be taking a look at on your screen right now. It said that the YMCA is inclusive. It tells me that let it be known that under no circumstances will we investigate an individual's birth gender identity and then assign individuals to locker rooms that would counter to, that would be counter to the law, counter to respect for our people, and it is not who or what we are as an organization. Now, coming up at 6.30, we'll hear from that man who started that Facebook post will also hear more from the why and how the day an LGBTQ organization is feeling about this. Back to you. Maybe thank you. This man, a Centerville man, has been arrested by the FBI out of this morning's investigation on West Alex Bell Road in Washington Township. The Montgomery County Sheriff's Office says a device was transported from the home. It was taken to a Washington Township fire station where it was safely destroyed by the Dayton bomb squad in a controlled detonation. Now, 21 year old Alex Jakes is now being held in the Montgomery County Jail for making threats online to commit a school shooting in California. Now, he's been federally charged with making interstate threats. The FBI National Threat Operations Center got a tip last week about a YouTube video that Jakes is accused of posting, reportedly showing him using multiple firearms to shoot a Chromebook computer with a Washington Middle School sticker on it. That school is in Salinas, California. Now, Jakes had attended a school in that county. FBI investigators seized eight firearms from his home while executing a federal search warrant. Well, this past weekend snowstorm in Buffalo, New York could break records. Right now, the state has logged as much as six feet of snow, which all started falling on Thursday. Some areas picked up nearly 80 inches. Western New York is used to the snow, of course, but it's the amount of snow in that short period of time that caused concern. Now, the state record for the most snowfall in a 24 hour period goes back to 1966 at 50 inches of snow. So it is too early to tell though if that storm broke that record. It's an amazing thing to uh, experience, but at the same time, it's brutal. Like I don't, I've never seen this before. The storm may travel in the region dangerous, triggering road closures, driving bans and flight cancellations the weekend before Thanksgiving. New York Governor Kathy Hochul submitted a federal emergency declaration request to the president to get funding for impacted counties. And all that snow impacted a court hearing for the accused Buffalo mass shooter. Peyton Gendron was sent for a change of plea hearing today, but that appearance was adjourned with no new date immediately set. We're told he's expected to plead guilty. Gendron faces 25 state and federal hate crime charges in connection to the May mass shooting at a grocery store. Ten people were killed in what investigators say was a racially motivated attack. Live look from our Kettering Health Sky Cam now as the sun sets over the Miami Valley. A seemingly warmer day today, Natalie. At least it felt that way to me. Definitely warmer. In fact, a lot warmer, although it is a little chilly out here on our weather patio. Now that the sun has set, we still have a little bit of a breeze, so it's bringing just a little bit of a wind chill for us. But currently we have us sitting in the 40s, 43 in Dayton, 43 Troy, 40 in Bell Fountain at this hour. So again, this is chilly, but compared to where we were at this time yesterday, we're actually 17 degrees warmer, so it is a lot warmer right now. 16 degrees warmer in Springfield, same thing up in Wapakoneta. Heading through the rest of the evening, temperatures will fall, going to be dropping into the 20s again, so it will be a cold night. We have a clear sky, which will allow temperatures to really drop mid-20s in the morning, but I have a very mild forecast on the way. I'll talk about how mild we'll get in just a bit. 
Natalie, thanks so much. A live look in Colorado Springs now, where over the weekend five people were killed and at least 25 others injured. It happened here at Club Q, which is an LGBTQ club nightclub late Saturday night, the day before the International Transgender Day of Remembrance. A memorial growing outside of that club tonight. The suspect has been identified as Allrich. Now, according to court records, he's now facing five murder and hate crime charges. Authorities say two brave club goers stopped the shooter from continuing his rampage. I saw um, what I believe uh, was probably the gunman lying on the ground, um, getting beat up and and kicked and, and yelled at by two very brave uh, people who I still don't know the identity of those two people, but I, I hope I can find out one day because I, I truly believe those two people saved my life. We're told the suspect was also arrested last June, accused of threatening to hurt his mom with a homemade bomb and weapons, but no charges were ever filed. Now there are questions over red flag laws because there's no public record that police or relatives tried to trigger that law. The red flag law lets authorities take weapons away from people deemed dangerous to themselves or others. According to the AP, Colorado has one of the lowest rates of red flag usage. So scary. I heard shots, broken glass, bodies. It was, how, why? Please stop killing us because we're just people trying to exist. Colorado Springs was previously the site of a mass shooting in 2015 when a shooter opened fire at a Planned Parenthood clinic, killing three and hurting eight others. Now, the Greater Dayton LGBT Center taking to Facebook to say that we send love to the Colorado Springs LGBTQ plus community and to all those affected by senseless tragedy wherever you may be. The center is going to be hosting a candlelight vigil tomorrow to stand in solidarity with Club Q. We're going to be there and it's happening at 7 p.m. in front of the Greater Dayton LGBT Center on North Jefferson Street. The risk of a countrywide rail strike is growing tonight. The nation's largest rail union has now rejected a tentative labor deal with freight railroads. Twelve unions are involved in this. All of them need to approve to prevent a strike. If even one of them goes on strike, the other 11 would honor the picket lines. So far, seven of the 12 have voted to approve that five year deal which includes a 24% raise and $5,000 in bonuses. But some union members say this doesn't address the demanding schedules and quality of life issues for some employees. When you work this hard and you can't make it to a funeral, a family funeral, you can't make it to a graduation, uh, we're talking about once in a lifetime events that these people are being deprived of going to unless they've worked uh, enough to have enough points to go attend that one function, but then that takes out all those sick events you're talking about that you never can plan for. A nationwide strike could happen as soon as December 5th if unions don't agree on a contract. Now, a strike of that magnitude would have disastrous impacts on the economy, an estimated $2 billion a day lost each day. If a deal isn't reached, Congress could step in. Lawmakers have the power to impose contract terms if both sides can't come to an agreement. Well, just in the last few hours, a federal jury awarded a Fairborn man $45 million after he was wrongly incarcerated. Megan's at the now desk. This is historic, right? Yeah, Adam, it definitely is. This is the biggest civil rights award in state history and comes more than 30 years after Dean Gillespie's 1991 conviction. After serving 20 years in prison back in 2011, he was exonerated and set free with the help of the Innocent Projects. At the time, a jury found that a former Miami Township police detective suppressed evidence and also contaminated eyewitness identification in, the, in that case. Gillespie is now an artist and serves on Ohio's Innocence Project board in hopes of helping others wrongly convicted and incarcerated. Live look at the White House now, where President Biden's duties today included something a little more feathered than normal. The votes are in. They've been counted and verified. There's no ballot stuffing. There's no foul play. <laughs> the only red wave this season is going to be a German Shepherd commander knocks over the cranberry sauce on our table. <laughs> that will cause... They are big turkeys, aren't they? My fellow Americans, please welcome the 2022 National Thanksgiving turkeys, chocolate and chip. Well, these Thanksgiving turkeys will steer clear of the table this year. They've been pardoned by the president, celebrating 75 years of the annual tradition. The National Turkey Federation says the now pardoned turkeys plan to earn an honorary poultry science degree for North Carolina State University. The Ross County community coming together tonight to support an officer shot in the line of duty after the break, how they're doing it, and the call to come out and show some love.
And Buckeye fans, it is the week of Thanksgiving, and that means it's Beat Michigan Week at Ohio State. Still ahead, what Columbus police say about safety ahead of the big game. Plus, I'm tracking our next weather maker as well as some very mild weather that's coming up. You're watching Dayton 24-7 now. Weather Window, presented by the National Weather Desk. Washington's Mount Rainier put on quite a show over the weekend. Those clouds overhead are called lenticular clouds, which can often look like spaceships. Now to Gatlinburg, where bear sightings are common, but what about a family of bears climbing a tree? Mama Bear is resting on a limb, while four of her cubs appear to be having a great time. Want to see your weather photos and videos on TV? Click Chime In on this station's website to share. A community in mourning showing their commitment to a man who has protected them for years. Ross County Sergeant Eric Cochran was shot Thursday in the line of duty at the Ross County Sheriff's Office. Since then, people have been rallying around his family and his co-workers. Luann Stoya shows us the support. The community is looking for ways to actively support deputies and loved ones of Sergeant Eric Cochran. Some have designed and donated t-shirts. And check this out. Here is a community blood drive where all slots are filled today. Now we stopped by the Ross County Sheriff's Office and we wanna show you blue ribbons have been tied to lamp posts and parking meters. They surround the Justice Center where both police and the county are headquartered. Many of the people who turned out for the blood drive say they just want law enforcement to know they're supported during this time. We've talked with Ohio BCI about the investigation into the shooting. BCI says investigators are in the process of gathering evidence now. In the weeks to follow, spokesman Steve Irvin says they will review evidence, talk with witnesses. There will be an autopsy, which will include toxicology tests, which typically take six to eight weeks. Video surveillance and body camera video will also be part of the investigation. Now we just got word that they will be holding another blood drive here in Chillicothe tomorrow showing support for Deputy Sergeant Eric Cochran. I'm Luann Stoya in Chillicothe. Back to you. 
Well, after a pretty frigid weekend, today actually didn't feel too bad outside. And as we look towards the holiday and everyone hitting the road, hopefully it's going to continue to improve a little bit each day. Yeah, a little bit warmer <laughs> each day. It does Just get a better. little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, big difference today compared to yesterday, even though it was still a little chilly, still chilly out there right now. We have a mostly $5 million in safety and security support for Ohio colleges and universities. The money will cover expenses for things like security cameras, door locks, alarms, public address systems, and metal detectors. A lot of that funding is actually going to be coming right here to the Miami Valley. So Central State is getting $150,000. Clark State will receive more than $93,000. Edison State Community College is getting more than $61,000. Sinclair Community College is going to receive more than $118,000. And Wright State is going to receive nearly $148,000. Now, Governor DeWine saying, quote, the importance of campus safety cannot be understated or overstated. And Ohio is committed to supporting efforts that keep our colleges and universities safe. Wright State University Police dropping off $5,000 worth of food for the campus's food pantry today. It's all part of its No Shave November fundraiser. The department is doing this for students who are in need of food, especially around the holidays for those without a hot meal. Officials say bringing everyone together for a fundraiser like this creates a community feel within the department and the campus. In the past, years ago, um, you had members of the community or members of the department that would donate to this fundraiser and this fundraiser and this fundraiser. And so our goal is to make a much bigger um, impact for our community. Last year, the donations brought in around $2,000 in food, so this year's more than doubled it. And speaking of Wright State, the Ohio State Controlling Board has approved nearly a million dollars for the university. That funding will be used to buy equipment for the Lab Animal Resource Occupational Safety Project and the Technology Infrastructure Upgrade Project. Both of those will enhance the campus's infrastructure. Well, it is officially the holidays at the White House. Megan's at the Dow Desk, so we can only imagine what's going on there. Yeah, big surprise, but the official White House Christmas tree has just arrived in the last few hours. Horses actually carted up the 18 and a half foot fur where First Lady Jill Biden was on hand to receive it. The tree came from a farm in Pennsylvania this year and next Wednesday on November 30th, the National Park Service and National Park Foundation are going to be holding the 100th lighting of the White House's other famous evergreen, the National Christmas tree on the ellipse. Well, new testing done in Los Angeles shows 45% of fentanyl pills are deadly. Federal officials say Los Angeles has become one of the biggest fentanyl distribution hubs in the country. Just this year alone, in October and November, officials there have seized as much fentanyl as they did in 2019 and 2020 combined. Homeland Security investigators say its office is on track to double the amount of fentanyl seized during the past four years combined. Uh, our testing tells us that 45% of these pills contain 2 milligrams or more of fentanyl. Scientists tell us that 2 milligrams could be sufficient to cause adverse health reactions up to and including death. There is no denying that when we reduce the drug supply, we reduce the drug harm in our community. And that is what, uh, that is what the focus of our wholesale interdiction is. Federal law enforcement officials say they're working on a multifaceted approach to target street-level dealers, darknet vendors, and cartel-supplied traffickers. Last year, more than 100,000 Americans died of drug overdoses, the highest in the nation's history. A story from our partners at the Dayton Business Journal. Now Red Robin Gourmet Burgers and Brews is expanding here in the Miami Valley. The restaurant has now filed for a liquor permit to open a location near the Dayton Mall where Logan's Roadhouse used to be. The casual dining restaurant has appetizers, soups and salads, sandwiches and wraps, and of course, gourmet burgers and drinks. So if the project moves forward, this location would be the third here in the Miami Valley, joining restaurants in Vandalia and Beaver Creek. And we have all the details for you right now on Dayton247now.com. You can find this story plus others like it right there under the Dayton Business Journal heading in the news tab. Well, every M on Ohio State's campus is now X'd out in red tape because it's beat Michigan week, of course. And if you're a Buckeye football fan, you know what this weekend holds. Ohio State and that team up north are set for a colossal showdown in the shoe. Both are undefeated for the first time since the game of the century in 2006. More than 100,000 people expected to go to the stadium to watch the two battle it out on the field. So how are campus police planning to keep everyone safe? We're going to have a very strong police presence. We're going to have officers on foot and on bicycles, and they're going to be riding around making sure that everybody is safe. Officers will also be stationed at street corners and major intersections to make sure everyone gets in and out of the stadium smoothly, and they encourage all attendees to have a safety plan. 
Well, it was warmer today, but still a little chilly out there. So if you want it to be a little warmer, I got some good news for you. Here's a look at temperatures over these next several days. Warming trend. In fact, Thanksgiving Day, we're talking upper 50s. It's going to be pretty, pretty pleasant. And then back into the mid 50s by Friday and Saturday. We're also tracking some rain back in the forecast, too. But until we head into our Friday time frame, we actually have lots of sunshine. Thanks to high pressure, keeping things nice and calm and then mild. We really begin to warm up as we head into the day tomorrow. Same thing with our Wednesday, especially our Thursday. And then by Thursday evening, we do start to see rain chances begin to build in. This will be with our next weather maker. You could already see rainfall Thursday morning, which will be to our southwest. By late Thursday into Friday, that will be our next chance for rain. I'll have a look at that seven day coming up. Natalie, thanks. A bakery and cafe in downtown Waynesville promises to bring you tasty treats from the cupboard to the table. Still ahead, where to go get, to get a fresh cup of joe and a fresh made pastry. And it's now time for our TikTok of the day. I break down why fog, fog forms when it rains. Sometimes on a calm night after it rains, fog will form. Fog forms when the temperature drops to the dew point and the air becomes saturated. A few things that will help that happen will be calm winds, a clear sky, and a recent rain that has left the ground saturated.
the Dayton 24-7 Now News app, brought to you by the Jeff Schmidt Auto Group. Well, if you're looking for a place to have your morning coffee with a fresh-made pastry, a bakery, and cafe in downtown Waynesville might be calling your name. Taze Joshi, host of Good Day Dayton, brings us inside Hubbard's Cupboard. Today I want to show you an amazing place you can get some tasty treats in downtown Waynesville. This is a Hubbard's Cupboard and they've got some great stuff here. Of course, they serve coffee on a daily basis, but they are best known for being a bakery. Some delicious cookies, lots of great sweet treats. And their top seller is their cinnamon rolls. They spent about five hours making each one of these with a cream cheese icing. Really delicious and they do not skimp on the cinnamon tasty stuff here. Of course, they also do sandwiches. They do some paninis here that they press in house. They are tasty and a, a fan favorite of some locals here in Waynesville. So if you're looking for a good place to get some tasty snacks or maybe just a meal, try Hubbard's Cupboard in Waynesville. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, great weather over these next several days. Finally, nice enough to maybe get out, do some of that decorating outdoors. Get it done with while we do have some of this nice weather. And of course, Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, likely going to be probably doing some meal prepping. Even these next couple of days, probably doing that as well with temperatures that are going to be in the 50s, close to 60 degrees on Thanksgiving Day, which will be really nice. So here's a look at our extended forecast. Notice those temperatures staying mild through the rest of this week. I know no, normal high temperature is 50. Oh, so okay. we actually climb above normal, close to 60 on Thanksgiving. And we're also tracking some showers as we head into our Friday and then also on our Sunday too. But looking pretty good next several days. Uh, 58 is going to feel really nice. Nice change of pace after last week. Yeah. Well, ju just Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> yes, it wasn't pleasant at all. So, it's yeah, soak really up good. these nice days. Tomorrow's going to be another nice one with lots of sunshine as well. Perfect. All right, all right, Natalie, thanks. Thanks for being with us tonight. You can always connect with us on social media. We're headed over to Fox 45 next. We hope you join us there.